What happens to our brain as we age? And how does mobile phone games that test our memory, as well as activities that test our reaction time, affect our brain health? Lastly, what is Cognitive Reserve and how can we use it to our advantage? Hi guys, this is Jingship, founder of Allset. In this episode of our Health Kicks podcast, our intern Yishen speaks to her prof, Teo Weeping, on the topic of brain health. Without further ado, let's shoot the first question. What happens to our brain as we age? So let's say every 10 year interval, so from the 30s onwards, then what happens to our brain? And then 10 years later, in the 40s, how does our brain change from there? Yeah, so I think it's, um, it's, uh, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that as we age, you know, our brains actually do shrink um, a little bit. Um, I think on average, we are probably talking about a 1-2% uh, uh, atrophy or, or shrinkage every few years. So um, by the time we are in our 80s, we can potentially be losing up to 15-20% of our total brain volume. Okay. Um, so, I mean, by and large, this is, this is something that, uh, that we expect, um, but it's of course affected by um, many different factors as well, like your lifestyle, your own genetics, um, mm. that will affect this rate of, of, of change in the brain. Mm, okay, so how does this um, atrophy of the brain affect our daily lives in terms of cognitive function? Yeah, so if you can imagine, um, if uh, um, let's say, for example, um, we have a, a, a normal healthy brain and it's functioning well. Um, as we start to see this atrophy of the brain, um, we generally also find that um, we have... Well, what it also means is that there's less neurons because the mm. neuron sort of dies out. Okay. Um, that, that will obviously affect the capacity to do or to process information because now you have few neurons to do the same amount of work mm. um, and also the connection between the neurons or connection between different brain regions as well might be affected right so therefore it will result in things like maybe um, poorer brain function i.e maybe your memory um, your inhibition your ability to to manage your mood for example um, okay. it's also um, it will affect things like your reaction time i think the the most obvious thing is that as we grow older reaction time becomes a lot longer Okay. And it is indicative of, of your of the the re, of the decline in the ability to process information. I see. Okay. So, uh, what are the best practices that we can do in order to maintain a healthy mm. brain? Yeah. So, uh, obviously, there are many. Like I said before, there are many factors that affect mm, yeah. uh, brain function and your brain health. Right. So. Uh, there are uh, genetic factors which we obviously cannot change. So as uh, as we know recently, um, Chris Hemsworth took some time out from mm. acting because yes, he yes. he found out that uh, he had a specific gene that increases his risk of dementia. Mm. Um, but then again, um, there are also lifestyle factors and environmental factors that obviously play a, a huge role, right? So things like you know having a healthy diet, mm. healthy lifestyle, meaning that you sleep, you have adequate sleep. Um, you have got uh, um, enough physical activity and exercise throughout your life um, and that you are in a situation that is not always um, uh, that's not always giving you high levels of stress right okay. I mean I mean I, I sort of say that um, I, I know it's very difficult because every day we experience stress but it's also um, you need to be able to find strategies to manage that level of stress mm, as well. Like you don't want to be trapped in a situation Correct. where it's like consistently high levels of stress. Correct, right? exactly. I see, I see. Okay, so um, there are a lot of brain training gyms that are up and coming. So mm. how much do the exercises in these kind of gyms actually help to contribute? Yeah, so I think by and large, exercising uh, uh, or high levels of physical activity um, is, is important, right? So we all need to exercise because we know that it improves your overall health and well-being, um, but it also improves your brain function as well or helps you sort of maintain and optimize your brain function. Okay. Um, so things like, you know, cycling, swimming, running, going to the gym, these are all very good examples of, of exercise that you should be doing mm. that can benefit the brain. Um, of course, if we talk about something that's a bit more targeted, like so there are a lot of uh, brain training facilities and gyms that are coming up now. Um, I think by and large, the evidence is sort of suggesting that they are, uh, they are good sources because they sort of vary the, the type of exercise that you do. Um, mm, okay. And this variation might cause you to think a little bit more um, and, they, and, and they specifically train aspects of brain function. So things like reaction time, mm. things like being able to remember certain numbers in certain locations, right? Mm. So, and they couple it together with traditional forms of training. Okay. So you sort of 
uh, perhaps get the best of both worlds. Mm, mm. Okay, so that would require uh, some sort of training specificity la, in the sense like if I want to train my brain health, like these exercises are a good way to do so? Yeah. Okay. So, so I think that, yeah, so you're exactly right. Um, so this uh, goes back to what do you want to improve and, and how do you want to improve it, right? Mm. So if you want to train your... For, for, for muscle strength, you train in a certain way. And if you want to train your brain health, you will also train in a specific way as well. Mm, okay. So um, what are some of the most harmful activities that we can do mm -hmm. that will negatively impact our cognitive health? Yeah. So uh, I think it sort of goes back to your, the, the environmental factors that, mm. that we talked about and also the lifestyle factors that we talked about. So obviously having a poor diet, you know, high, process, uh, high levels of processed food that you're eating throughout your life, um, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, different. If you're not exposing yourselves to things like high fiber, um, 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 you know, the Mediterranean diet, for example, is, is is has been shown to be very protective of the brain. So Mediterranean mm. diet is is uh, there's a lot of veg, a lot of green leafy vegetables, olive oil, mm. cheese, um, these sorts of things that would uh, that would promote brain health. But okay. I mean, obviously, if you're eating fast food all the time, mm. maybe not so good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, things and sleep is probably the other one, right? We know that as, as Singaporeans, we are always very sleep deprived. And as, yeah. right, as a student, you would also know that, <laughs> that uh, you know, you have to study and then you have to mark for exams. So not, not good in the long term if you don't sleep adequately. Mm, uh, so that, that's the other thing. And of course, the last one is smoking. Um, okay. Smoking is, 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 we know that smoking is bad for the cardiovascular system. But uh, smoking is also very bad for the brain as well. And the brain and the cardiovascular system work in sync with each other to maintain overall brain health. Okay. Right? So poor, poor cardiovascular system tends to lead to poor brain health as well. I see. Okay. Mm. So would it be possible to slow down or prevent the onset of neurocognitive diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease? Yeah. So uh, I think this is uh, a question that I get asked very often and I think the evidence uh, is suggesting that we can um, uh, if we sort of start early, right? Mm. So if, if we are very active in our 20s and 30s and into the later stages of life, mm. um, we, we tend to build what's called a cognitive reserve, right? So this is essentially uh, money in the bank, mm, right? So okay. the example that I'll give is that if you accumulate uh, if you if you have good saving capacity when you're younger, older when you reach to an older stage, you know you have more you have money more to spend. Correct, yeah. right? So so it's the same with the brain uh, with the brain as well. Um, in in our younger years, or and even in our later years as well, we want to try and accumulate cognitive reserve, meaning mm. we want to optimize brain function. We want to raise the base level, baseline level of our cognitive function as well. Mm. So as we age, we know that as we age, we are going to experience some form of decline. Um, we want to make sure that we have built up enough capacity and so reserve. that we can like manage that. Decline. Correct, exactly. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, so would phone games like um, all the memory games mm. or Sudoku, would these kind of games actually provide any benefit to our cognitive health? Yeah. So I think, again, the, the, the evidence uh, in the scientific literature is, is sort of mixed on this one. Um, because if you look at all the, the games like Sodoku, uh, um, you know, games that you play on the phone, these are very specific uh, games that will target um, you know, specific forms of, of brain function. So things like memory, mm. reaction time and all that. But if you look at activities of daily living, say for example, you are a grandparent bringing your grandchild to school, mm. right? Um, and you're crossing the road, right? So that requires a, an individual to be aware of the surroundings, mm. um, look out for the cars, look out for the, for the child, and then waiting for, for the signal to change so that you can cross the road safely. And as you cross the road, you need some element of reaction time to make sure you cross the road within a stipulated amount of time. Yeah. Right? So, in, in well, what I'm trying to say here is that day-to-day -day activities involve many different aspects of your co uh, cognitive functioning yeah. to work together. Mm. Right? Whereas some of these games typically only target one. Mm, I see. Maybe two types of functioning, um, mm. which, which, which sort of leads to this sort of... Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, this yes and no type of, of, of answer. 
I see. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think that was uh, that's all the questions I have for you today. So thank you for taking the time to come down and doing this podcast, lah. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that, we have come to the end of this episode. If you know of anyone we should feature on our Health Gate podcast, please feel free to reach out to us. If not, till next time, take care.